fine dining is discussed in the Northwest, the menu at Le Gourmand is normally in the discussion. And we're very happy to be in the kitchen at Le Gourmand. And we are with Bruce Napley, the co-owner and co-chef. You'll meet the other co-owner and co-chef in just a moment. You also have the sandbar, too. Is that we right? do, absolutely. Okay, so now what are we going to cook today, Bruce? We're going to cook a good first course, a zucchini and mint soup. Ooh, that sounds good. How do we start? Well, first we're going to cook some shallots, onions, and leeks okay. in unsalted butter. So first we'll get the, get the quarter pound of unsalted butter in a heavy bottom non-aluminum pan. And we'll get that on low heat, so the butter melts, it doesn't brown. And we'll take one leek, one leek white, okay. and cut it into small pieces, and add it to the butter. What kind of taste are we expecting out of, out of a, using a, a vegetable like this? You get a more, it's sort of a complex onion flavor, mild but rich. That's okay. what, what the leek does. A lot of, I think a lot of folks are afraid to use them because they're not quite sure what they're going to do, you know, but then they've never used them before. Right. Well, leeks are, they're just another member of the onion family. That's, and yeah. here we have yet another member, the shallot, which is like a small onion, only very concentrated, sharp onion flavor. And oh, I'll tell you a little trick here that you learn in the restaurant department. We've got three shallots we're going to use. Okay. And that is, for peeling an onion family member, like the shallot or an onion, you cut off the top and bottom, mm -hmm. and then make a slit One slice through the, the side. side. Yep. And then, rather than fighting with the little papery skin, you can peel off the papery skin That's with right. the first layer yep. of the uh, shallot or onion, whatever, and Let me get this for you. make it. It seems yeah. wasteful. However, we save all of these flavorful bits put into the stock pot so okay. nothing gets wasted. And so we'll do that again with this shallot. Okay. And again with the shallot you get the that wonderful flavor, savory flavor of the onion, but in a concentrated form. Onions is, tend is to be sharp? nice and I sweet. Mean, so it gives you a bite in the a little bit of a bite. Okay. Which is makes it interesting and we don't have to we can just cut these in half. And we'll make sure the heat is low so that these Vegetables cook slowly. Don't want them to color. And there, little chunks. This will be fine. And now, then finally, the, yeah, the onion, the most okay. familiar member of the onion family. Uh, but, but sometimes we have access. Well, almost all year now, we have access to sweet onions. Right. Would you use a sweet onion in this? I would wouldn't in this. I'd use a, a regular. Yellow, just the mm -hmm, dry onion, what they call it dry onion. Because the sweet onions have their place definitely, but in, in something like a savory soup like this, I'm trying to get the, that particular, that sort of sharper onion flavor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sweet onions in this context tend to, to come across as being pretty bland. Uh, there we go. Move these over. Okay. And one. This shouldn't be a problem because it's just one onion, but if you're finding yourself with a recipe with lots of them to keep from crying, <laughs> the best thing, I've tried all sorts of crazy remedies to that, but the one I found that helps the most is keeping the onions in the refrigerator. Oh, really? Because that... What, Takes the what, tears out of them. Yeah, but gets, <laughs> what gets your eyes is the, uh, the, the gas coming off of the onion with all the sulfur in it. and uh, you, got, you got a tip there for sure. Yeah. To keep the onions in the refrigerator, it keeps the uh, keeps the juice in from getting out into the air. Okay, so we've got one onion, three shallots, and that leek white cooking in the unsalted butter. Now we'll add three bay leaves also. Oh, okay. Or four, as the case may be, right off the bay tree. And we'll stir them in as well, and they will cook, as I say, until they relax. About how long would that be? About ten minutes. Okay, and you just watch them. So you can see them. Mm -hmm. and open up a little bit. Right, and you'll see they'll, they will become translucent and they'll start smelling really good. Oh, that's like, that's <laughs> so point. you just want to eat them right at that point. They okay, have so we're going to let that. this cook for about 10 minutes. Right. Okay. And then we'll get on to the zucchini and the mint. Okay. So This is a, a good recipe because it's very simple, straightforward. The This beginning with the shallots, onions, and uh, leeks is a good beginning to any kind of soup, actually. Good so it's kind of a versatile, good technique to go a lot of different ways. And 
in the summer, especially when, if you know anybody who's growing zucchini, there are always more of them than one knows Indeed. what to do with. Indeed. And this is a good way to use them up, too. That's a great and, idea. And it's a surprising, surprisingly good result from something very simple. Well, it's, it's things that actually we are very often really familiar with. If we haven't used them, we've at least seen them in the grocery store, and we're not surprised by them. Yeah. But that's a nice thing. To and they go together really well. Okay. And you can also serve the soup's good hot or cold as well. So it's pretty now, versatile. When you fix the zucchini, are you going to leave the skins on? I'm going to leave the skins on. I found doing it both ways that you can peel them or not. And the peel actually gives it a little extra green color, which is nice. Right. But it doesn't uh, adversely affect the flavor. It's just fine. And I'm sure like a potato, all the... Nutrients are in the peel. I, you know, I, was, so I was going to ask you that, but I had, uh, it, it seems pretty obvious that it would be, yeah. yeah. So now, how many are we going to put in? We're going to put a pound and a half, which in this case is four okay. normal mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. yeah, like that. And I'll just take the the uh, top and tail of them. Take those their, are, those are very nice them. zucchini. Yeah, these are everything we use here as local, organically grown, and so that goes with, for these you zucchini notice as that, well. But I've noticed that, at least in the stores, organic foods suddenly are looking really good and being presented very attractively and very appetizingly. Where before they, you looked at it and you thought, no, it looked, you know, I know it's organic, yeah, I know it's good, but it looks kind of weak. Yep. <laughs> yeah, part of, <laughs> part of what identified as organic was as irregular and a lot of times yeah, but didn't look very good, but now they look come beautiful. a long, long way. Yeah. And, it's, it, and believe me, if you get the organic, it does make a difference. It, it really right. tastes good. Well, half the battle for, you know, flavor is finding the ingredients and, um, you know, and the, the, in terms of flavor, in my experience, you know, the best tasting ingredients are the ones that are grown closest to you, harvested as near as possible to when and, you're using them and, and organically fresh. grown. Would be as fresh yeah. as possible because yeah. they get to you, yeah. I mean, it's, growing things organically is good in a number of ways, but in the most sort of selfish way, it tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's real selfish. I, I think, you know, that no, okay. cooking can be a lot of fun, but the end result is you sit down at the table and you, you, you eat <laughs> it and you enjoy it. And if, when it comes out <laughs> like that, of course you enjoy it. It's so and those are starting to, to get a little bit translucent. Aren't they? Yeah, they're they're breaking down a bit. Which but is you're really not. Good. That's not under a high heat. No, very low heat. Or over a high and heat. And a I heavy bottom know. pan, so you get even cooking. Okay. Because we have a thin bottom pan, it tends to develop hot spots, and something will be coloring while the rest of it's not cooking. And so it's it's a that that's a combination copper and steel, or yeah, this one it's you know a pretty good inv invention they came up with about 30 years ago where they could put stainless steel inside right. onto copper or any other metal too. And copper is the great heat conductor mm -hmm. and you know, stainless steel is inert so it's, you know, it's a, a great surface to, to cook with on the inside. And copper of course has to have something because it's toxic just by itself. Uh, are, is that uh, about ready over there? It, yeah. it, it looks beautiful. And now they, uh, all the leeks, shallots, and onions are all translucent, all relaxed and ready for the next step. Which is? To add the zucchini. We've got a pound and a half of zucchini here. Okay. And then we'll add four cups of chicken stock. Well, no, wait a second. I, I, I've used chicken stock, and I've never seen chicken stock that thick before. That, that's very nice. That's, that's beautiful. Very concentrated. How did you make that? I mean, how do you get to that? <laughs> well, I'll say, well, the one thing, the other trick, which is we're getting really rich stock that most people I've seen at home don't realize, that's is right. that you should never, when you're making a stock, use more water than will just cover the ingredients. Oh. People buy a big, beautiful stock pot, and uh -huh. they get like a chicken and put it in there, mm -hmm. and it's a vegetables, and then filled up with water. That's right. But actually, to get the stock to have the flavor that you need, you just can't fill it up any farther than will just barely cover the ingredients. And that's how and you get the thickness. And that's how you get the, the concentration, the thickness. A lot, of, a lot of gels in those chicken bones. Love coming into your kitchen and learning <laughs> tricks like that. I really do. Okay, that's, that's, that looks fantastic. Yeah. This is going to be good soup. Yeah. And then we'll cover it and turn up the heat and bring it to a boil. Okay, and we're going to let it boil for how long? Then? And then once it comes to a boil, we can turn it down, let it simmer until the zucchini is soft, which is about 10 minutes. Okay. Now, does simmer mean that you're boiling, just the bubbles are coming up just a little bit? Right, it just means that it's a slow. Very slow boil. A slow boil, yeah, okay. that'd be good. Right? Okay, sure. Now, when that's done, what are, what are we going to do? Then we're going to add the mint. So we have to the take mint. all the mint leaves off 
the stamp. That seems like a, a strange addition to, to what's already in there. Why? Well, uh, actually, it's, it's a way of, you know, zucchini tends to be a little bit on the bland side. Okay. And this is a way of sort of pepping it up. And uh, it's also when, at the same time of year when there are many, many zucchini around, there are also, lots, also of, lots, lots of mint, of mint too. Right. And they go well together. And I was, now, a lot of times I've seen mint added at the beginning. You're adding it at the end. Right. Does that make a difference? It does. makes a big difference. And neither way is right or wrong. It's just that mint can right. sort of express its flavor in two fundamental ways. One, if you add it in the beginning and it cooks for a long time, it's a, like a big low base note. It's a, a background flavor. Mm -hmm. And then if you add the mint at the end, it preserves that bright, the, the bright flavor, the bright sort of chipperness of the mint. And so and I like that here because it kind of it takes the uh, the zucchini's got enough of a base note by himself. So, it, but we've also got a lot of leeks in there and some shallots and, and some nice and, onions. And that fills and in the flavor yeah. with a, a sort of a savory richness. With the with the stock helps that too. Exactly. Yeah, and that nice rich stock that would make a difference. Yeah. And so we've got um, an ounce of mint leaves is what we're going to end up with. That's, that's interesting in a recipe when you're doing mint leaves and, and they say that it's supposed to be an ounce. Uh, unless you've got a scale, that, mm. you've got to have a pretty good eye. Right. Well, and I weighed these beforehand. So. <laughs> Secret <laughs> out. In the interest of full disclosure, I have All to. All right. That's fair. That's, that's but fair. also, it's funny. Think green things like mint, spinach, anything that's in a leaf form. It, a pound, you know, an ounce takes up a lot of space, mm -hmm. but then when it cooks, it just collapses down. That's true. Down to nothing. So an ounce of mint does look like a lot, but once it's in the pot, it's going to cook down into very little. I'm taking it off the stems because everything in the soup is edible as it doesn't have to be strained out. You mm -hmm. know, like the onions are peeled, we don't worry about the onion peels. Right. The bay leaves are going to take out later. Okay. And uh, if we put the mint in with the stems, we'd have a problem. What are we going to do with, with the, the stems? stems? Yeah. And uh, if we just are using the leaves, the leaves we can puree up with the soup and and they'll they won't now, when you puree that, that that's going to let out a lot of the taste isn't it yeah it I yep mean, it'll I mean, it, the mint will be there for sure right all right yeah. just almost there and take that little butt end right off even with that little bit of stem right right cuz we are going to strain this too and so if there sure. happens to be anything untoward in the texture world that makes it through the blender, yeah, okay. we'll, we'll strain it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good. Okay. Now, we're ready. All right. Let's check on these. Okay, the zucchini's ready. Oh, Bruce, that smells wonderful. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> you know, too bad we don't have smell vision folks. Really, this is, this, oh, man. And that's without the mint. Oh, yeah, yeah really. <laughs> now we add the mint leaves, and we'll just simmer the mint leaves in here for five minutes. How far down are they going to shrink inside, or are they? No, they will. They'll probably collapse by at least half. Okay. Oh, that's, oh, that's really good. <laughs> and this will take about, what, five minutes? Five minutes. minutes. Okay. And then we're done. Well, now that you got the cover off and the five minutes gone <laughs> by, that smells pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, and now we've just got that mint infused in there for its bright flavor and we'll now take the soup and put it into a blender to puree it. Okay. Okay. And important if you can if you can remember Ah, remove, bay leaves. remove the bay leaves. Yep. Because though they do get softer than when they went in there, they don't really puree very but well. But leaving them on the stem made it very easy to remove them too. Absolutely. And we've got a big healthy bay tree out in the garden here. Okay. And so it's it's easy for us <laughs> to come up with bay leaves on the stem. All, All right. right. And oh, that smells good, folks. No fooling. Mm. And now we'll turn this on.
Oh, now, about yeah. how long was that? About 30 seconds. Okay. Just until it's it's pureed, until it's smooth. Until it's smooth, okay. And now we'll strain it back into the pot. Yeah. And oh, hopefully if there's any, if there are any large fibrous particles that somehow didn't get pureed, we'll catch them there. Strainer, catch the strainer, we'll catch that. And you get the nice green color from uh -huh. the, the skins. And a note on the texture. This should come out. Here we go. Well, thank you. This should come out just fine. You know, not too thick, not too thin, but as far as I'm concerned, there, it can be even a lot thicker than this. It can be thinner than this and still be a good soup. But if it's too thick, you can always thin it down with uh, a little more chicken stock. Okay. If it's too thin, something you could do is to simmer it and water will evaporate out of it and it will reduce and it will thicken up. Also, and that wouldn't that wouldn't cook it too much then. If yeah, that's the only problem that might tend to, yeah. to overcook it, in which case you could always take a couple more zucchini and puree them up, cook them for about 10 minutes and a little bit more stock and right. make like a zucchini a thick zucchini puree and add that and that would be When you have a recipe like this, there are a lot of ways to go if you, if, uh, if you make a few mistakes. Right. There's that, always that, something. That there's, there's very yeah. rarely anything that is irreparable. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Now, but this is just right, and it comes oh. across being very creamy, but of course, there's no cream in it. It's one of those really neat things about uh, soups that are based on a, a puree of a vegetable. Well, but what, what, what would happen if you'd added a heavy cream to that besides calories? Um, it would thousand. taste great. I bet it would. I bet it would. I bet it would. It wouldn't hurt it at all. Matter of fact, if you wanted to serve this soup cold, if you took it out of the refrigerator, the uh, zucchini and the stock tend to seize up, get pretty solid, and you mm -hmm. want to thin it down with something. And adding a little cream and stirring it oh, in is a perfect way to, be nice. to uh, make a cold soup out of this. Bruce, so, I'm not going to let you get out of here uh, without I getting better, a taste of that. Well, first, mm -hmm. I better put some salt in there just to oh, make okay. sure it's, it's seasoned what, up. What kind of salt? Um, I tend to like to use sea salt because it's got a few mineral impurities in it which make the flavor a little more complex. And this is a nice basic French sea salt, though I think somebody around here could make a mint if they, we have so much salt water here, they That's should get true. into this. And and it's, it's, it's so popular the crystals these days. are a little finer than, than other salts. Right, and, and it comes in different kinds of uh, crystal size. I like the finer ones just for, because they dissolve more easily. Uh -huh. And in a, a soup, that would be pretty, That's so a big thing. You can hand me two of those soup spoons. Certainly. And I can. There you go. See, it's always good before uh, final seasoning to taste it first. That's all. Good, good thing. point. Know where you're starting from. Yeah. No, and it should taste like what it's made out of, which in this case, it does. Mm. So good. Just need salt. And it may look like I'm going to add a lot of salt, but remember, this is a big pot of soup, so mm -hmm. it's going a long way. And the salt is all you need to bring out the flavor, all the savory flavor, the flavor of the stock that's in there. It's all hidden, and it just is waiting for the salt to bring it out. Now let's see what we have now. Interesting. <laughs> well, that tastes great. You've got the... That, that sounds interesting. Yes, I think it's, it's up to for you now. Gosh, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, you got to try that. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, if you put that in a, a dish. Here we go. And just to garnish this, I like to finish it up very simply. The most appropriate garnish, I think, is a mint leaf. So, Oh, that's neat. I was thinking of a, a dollop of, of cream or something like that. But. Oh, what a just a little lower cow. Oh, that looks so yeah. nice. So we just held back a couple of the leaves from the mint we were uh -huh. using. And the nice little ones. Oops. And all right. There we go. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Also, if one more tiny thing. If it's later in the season and the mint has is flowering, it's good to sprinkle the mint flowers over the top, oh. too. That okay. looks really pretty in that case. Really good Bruce, too. thank you. Thank you. Very just wonderful. Thank <laughs> working with you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.